things. They are a literal pain in the face. <laughs> literal. And I want to tell you that the way they work is that you have to leave them on, lower them, take a sip or a bite, and put them back up again. Just holding a glass of wine does not sterilize your breath as it comes out of your mouth. <laughs> Unfortunately. Or we would have all been better months ago. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, it really helps a whole lot, and it helps to keep us open and rolling. If we end up being a start case, we'll have to close down and deep clean, which will close us down for a month, and we don't want that to happen. Because we would lose some of the wonderful women of this wonderful women weekend, and we don't want that to happen. So um, I thank you for that. The other thing I want to tell you about is this. Isn't it beautiful? We have etched glasses for the mainstay, both beer and drink slash wine glasses. Uh, you can buy them at the bar, and when you bring them back and refill them, you get a dollar off every drink that gets poured into them. Wow. Isn't that just cool? And because um, we have such a love affair with Sue, look, there's one right here that she's going to drink her water out of. Isn't that cool? So some of the happenings from around Rock Hall are that the food bank that we used to have down in the Civic Center is no longer there. And the reason it's no longer there is because the building isn't occupiable anymore. So the food bank from Rock Hall has thrown together with Ho House Food Bank, which is on Route 20 coming on your way into town at the Assembly of God Church. This is the holiday season. In the holiday season in Kent County, all of the Lions Clubs get together. There's five of us, five clubs. We get together and we um, pack food boxes for everybody in the county who needs it, getting lists from social services and from all, all, of, all the fixed income people, all this stuff. We pack 500 boxes of food and distribute them throughout the county. It's lovely to live in a small, in a rural county in a small town. I have to tell you, it's just wonderful. So, um, we still have a food bin out there, and up until the 12th of December, which is our uh, holiday uh, show, we will collect food and take it to those food boxes to put it in there. So, if you come back again for an, one of our upcoming shows, like maybe Monday night, um, <laughs> you could um, bring a can of something and put it in there. Uh, we always look for good protein foods because it's hard to get good protein and things that our senior citizens can digest. So, you know, beans, not the best choice. Okay, so that's me. That's a public service announcement. Now we have Dave. So I'm Deborah, by the way, and I'm a board member, and this is Dave, and he's a board member, and he's our music man, and he's going to tell you about the music. All right, Dave. Thank you, Deborah. Health officer. All right, I'm Dave Robinson. I'm the vice president of the Mainstay. And I want to welcome you all to our Led Zeppelin tribute night. Did I get that wrong? Oh, that's, sorry, that's next month. All right, I'm just going to tell you briefly about a few things coming up here. Uh, we've got a number of great shows still waiting in the wings for you before the year is out, but I'll just highlight the next three. Um, starting with this coming Monday, November 22nd, 7 o'clock, vocalist and mainstay board member Barbara Parker is going to be here, and she's going to be the special guest of Joe Holt. And uh, they, they are going to do a show with, um, along with Bob Taylor, who I think is going to play bass on that night. So uh, you want to be there for that and catch Joe's Main State Monday show with uh, Barbara Parker and Bob Taylor. That's at 7 o'clock. And then Saturday, December 4th at 8 o'clock, the award-winning gospel trio Sum Barkin, Karen Somerville, Lester Barrett, and Jerome McKinney, with Jerry Werner at the piano and Ray Anthony on drums. And they're gonna do spirituals, folk songs, gospel, contemporary, and that should be an uplifting concert. And then uh, following that, we have Sunday, December 12th at four o'clock. That's a Sunday show and it's at four o'clock. Harp and Soul. 
That's Meredith Hardaway on Celtic harp and concertina, Ben Bennington on guitar and vocals, Rebecca Hardy on oboe, Nevin Dawson on viola, and Bob Ortiz on percussion. And um, as an extra bonus, no additional charge, singer-songwriter Pam Ortiz is going to be entertaining as well. And they're going to do songs for the season, holiday cheer. So I want to be there for that. And we'll be honoring our um, Charlie Bird Society members that night with a special event following that concert. Speaking of our Charlie Bird Society, it's almost Thanksgiving, right? Well, we here at the Main State want to give thanks. Um, I'm not going to lead you in prayer, but I, I want to give thanks to uh, all of our donors from the past year, past years, uh, and those who helped us get through the, this pandemic and having to shut down and go to live stream and then back again. Uh, and our Charlie Bird Society is our top tier of those donors, and we are so very grateful to them. And while we're saying thank you, I want to thank the Kent Cultural Alliance and the Maryland State Arts Council. They help us with funding, yes. <laughs> Every year they help us with, with funding. And this year we got a special grant from the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. And what do you suppose that was for? That was for our great stage being almost complete back here in, in the backyard. We're gonna be putting that to good use in the coming years, and we are in, in, uh, indebted to them for that. And finally, uh, you'll soon notice a new look for the front of our building. Stay tuned, that's coming soon, and that comes uh, partially under a grant from Main Street Rock Hall. So we want to thank them as well. Let's have a hand for all of our sponsors and friends. Alrighty, let's get on with tonight's show. We've got a fabulous group. We've got Tommy Cecil on the bass. We've got Robert Red on the piano. We've got Randy Reinhardt down from New York, and I thought he was gonna do cornet, but he brought his trombone. I don't know if he's going to do cornet as well, but he's fabulous on both. And on vocals, a mainstay at the mainstay, a mainstay of the mainstay. Would you please welcome Sue Matthews. Which one? 
Welcome to an evening in celebration of the life and lyrics of Sammy Kahn. We're going to dedicate tonight's performance to our dear friend, my, my buddy, my mentor, who founded this mainstay, Tom McHugh. About 15 years ago, uh, as we were preparing for Saturday night, booked by McHugh, Robert, Robert Red and I, uh, decided that instead of just throwing together some of our favorite songs randomly in a couple of sets, why not make it thematic? We're both drawn to the same era of music that comes from better than the first half of the 20th century. Music that was written for stage, screen, publishing houses, record labels. Music so rich in its writing that it continues to influence musicians, performers, and audiences of today. This immense body of work, when it's called together, is referred to as the Great American Songbook, or the Book of Standards. So we thought, why don't we celebrate the life and music or lyrics of these composers, these lyricists, and also the singing stars that performed their music and, and, and recorded it. And so our songbook series began. We are thankful. We have certainly enjoyed over all of these years debuting each of our songbook series shows right here at the Mainstay. Very, very special for us. So anyway, let's get on with our 11th installment. 11. The wonderful wordsmith, lyricist, Sammy Kahn, owns a lot of real estate in our American songbook, and he also owns all of these descriptives. Prolific, gifted, magical, beloved, successful, really, really <laughs> successful. We opened with the title song that he wrote with the composer Julie Stein for the 1954 Hollywood film, Three Coins in the Fountain. This brought him his first Oscar for Best Original Song, Three More Would Follow. Of the more than 150, over 150 solid hits <laughs> that he wrote with several different composers. Here's another one from this great team of composer Julie Stein and lyricist Sammy Kahn. They wrote this in 1942. I've heard that song before. One, two, one, two, three, four. It seems to me I've heard that song before. It's such a song with familiar score. Thank you. 
Like many of his peers, Samuel was born into an immigrant family doing their best to survive on the Lower East Side of New York City in the early 1900s. His parents, Polish Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe, came to America in hopes of finding a better life and a future for themselves and their family. Samuel Cohen, C-O-H-E-N, was born in New York City on June 18, 1913. He had four sisters, and because he was the only son, he had a mother who was determined that he was gonna be the doctor, the lawyer, or the dentist of the family. And this family, they were very loving, they were dedicated to each other, and although, although very poor, never humbled, and because their dad owned a restaurant just down the street where they all worked, of course, they never, never went hungry. There was a piano in the house, and Samuel learned to play a bit by ear, but the lessons were reserved for the sisters. His mother insisted, thinking that it was going to help him on his road to becoming that respect, respected, successful, professional, career life type of person, that he was going to learn to play the violin. Well, he wasn't a gifted violinist, <laughs> but he did the best that he could. And by the time he was 12 or 13, he was playing in an orchestra, a burlesque <laughs> orchestra. And he was also playing in the local Dixieland bands. Now his parents were very worried about this. How, how are these influences gonna help him on his way to becoming that doctor, that lawyer, or that dentist? But this was his introduction into the music industry where he would enjoy that highly respected, very successful professional career life. So we're gonna stay with the writing team of Stein and Kahn. This is a beautiful song that they wrote in 1947, time after time. Time after time, I tell myself that I'm so lucky to be loving you. So lucky to be the one you run to see in the evening when the day
time his junior year came about he was long gone long gone out of high school he was on the musicians road with his very good friend pianist Saul Chaplin when Samuel was 16 and Saul was 19 they decided to form their first band the pals of harmony this was in 1929 now Samuel was playing the violin and uh, but he decided he was going to start dabbling in a little bit of lyric writing Saul, enticed to be more creative at the same time, started testing the waters as a composer. Well, over the years, their writing got better and better, and by the time Samuel was 18, he was starting to realize some real success with his lyric writing. So he happily, thankfully, put down the violin <laughs> and picked up a pen for their newly formed, now, songwriting team of Saul Chaplin, and Sammy Kahn. Samuel was left to the side for Sammy, and after three times trying to change his last name, he finally settled on C-A-H-N. Their first big contract was with Decca Records in New York City. <laughs> A young Ella Fitzgerald was one of the label's artists, and her recording of Saul Chaplin and Sammy Kahn's song, If Ever You Should Leave Me, sold over 40,000 copies in 1937. Later years, and later years when both Ella and Sammy were enjoying a, a very successful career of life, he reflected on what it was like to see Ella recording his song. He said, here, she, looked, she was so young, he said, and she, standing in front of a microphone, she has a hand sandwich in one hand, <laughs> A bottle of Coca-Cola in the other, singing her heart out, youth. <laughs> so anyway, the next year, now it's 1938, Warner Brothers Vitaphone Studios uh, in Brooklyn, New York, put the two under contract to write special material for vaudeville acts. But was vaudeville kind of almost on its way out in the late 30s? I mean, how much longer did it? Yeah, it was probably more over the hump. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. But it was still work. So anyway, uh, Sammy often laughed when he was asked what it was like to write for them. We don't want it good, they'd say. We want it by Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, here now is a gem from the writing team of Saul Chaplin and Sammy Kahn. It was a huge hit for them. It continues to be played and recorded today. They wrote this in 1938. Please be kind. This is my first affair, oh please be kind Handle my heart with care, oh please be kind Tell me I 
over the few years that they wrote. In fact, at the time that they were writing, they were considered the other Rogers and Hart. I, I said the same thing, wow. Um, after several years of writing in New York, in 1940, Columbia Pictures brought the boys out to Hollywood. You know, it had been over 15 years that these two had been really, really good friends. They. They played together in those Dixieland bands and burlesque orchestra pits. They started their own band. They enjoyed quite a bit of success with their own writing team, but for some reason, this move to Hollywood proved their demise. Well, this was really difficult for both of them. And um, Sammy said later that actually, professionally, this was his worst rough patch. Chaplin moved back to New York where he enjoyed a full life of success writing for the theater. And Sammy Kahn decided to stay on the West Coast. Well, that was a good thing. Because within a short period of time, in 1942, he began collaborating with the composer and pianist Julie Stein. For over the next about 10 years, from 1942 to 54, they wrote for 19 Hollywood films. Kahn's highly successful association with Stein led Time Magazine in later years to write, and I quote, the team of Julie Stein and Sammy Kahn was as important to popular music as Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein II were to the theater. I know, wow, I mean, my goodness. Well, here's another beautiful song that these two wrote um, in 1944. Guess I'll hang my tears out to dry. <clears throat> the torch I carry is handsome. It's worth its heartache and ransom. And when the twilight steals, I know how the lady in the harbor feels. When I want rain, I get so 
sunny weather. I'm just as blue as the sky. Since love is gone, can't pull myself together. Guess I'll hang my tears out to dry. worked with him, started working with him for the very first time, they were amazed at not only how quickly he would pen a lyric, but how beautifully his words would engage with their, the composer's melodies. He was a genius at titles. He often had a title long before any lyric was written. Here's a quote, actually, from Sammy Kahn, uh, which uh, he wrote, this came from his autobiography entitled, I Should Care that he wrote back in 1974. Lyric writing has always been a thrilling adventure for me and something I've done with the kind of ease that only comes with joy. I insist I don't write a song as much as it writes me. And he loved each and every one of his songs. Now, I said earlier that he learned how to play the piano a little bit. He wasn't a pianist, but he could accompany himself, and that helped him sometime with his lyric writing. But it also, it also helped him if, you know, if he needed to be able to accompany, accompany himself, or maybe if he was asked to play one of his songs, because Sammy Kahn loved plugging his own tunes. In fact, throughout his career, Sammy Kahn insisted on introducing all of his songs himself. Whether or not the composer was there at the piano, whether or not there was a piano in the room where he could accompany himself to publishing houses, Hollywood studios, record labels, and individual singing artists who had hired him. Now, I understand that maybe this wasn't all that pretty, especially when he didn't have accompaniment, but he had great material, and he was a really good salesman. So let's get to the music that he wrote to. Let's give the music he wrote to its due. Robert, what are you guys going to play? So we're going to play uh, a tune introduced in a movie, Romance on the High Seas. Uh, this is a Julie Stein tune, and uh, introduced by Doris Day in that movie, and this is called It's You or No One. Thank you. 
It's the time to introduce the band. Holy cow! From New York, from New York, the wonderful Randy Reinhardt on the trombone. Such an incredibly talented, wonderful bassist from Washington, a good friend, Tommy Cecil. And my partner in crime with the songbook series, Robert is the musical director, among other things, who, by the way, is looking forward to getting back out on the road nationally and, nationally and internationally as the pianist with the Duke Ellington Orchestra. <laughs> Aren't they amazing? Okay, so, although most of his hits came from collaborations with composers Saul Chaplin, Julie Stein, Jimmy Van Heusen, Sammy Kahn worked with many composers throughout his career. And here's a wonderful song that he wrote with composer Nicholas Brodsky for the 1951 film Rich, Young, and Pretty. This won him uh, an Oscar nomination for Best Song in 1952 and became a favorite among jazz vocalists. Wonder why. Yeah. Wonder why I'm not myself of late. I'm feeling strangely great. I wonder why. Could explain why I walk in the rain. Just let them try. I guess there's a simple explanation. Unless I've come up with a new sensation. It could be that he's caught up with me and all the mystery. one of the most diverse lyricists of the 20th century. Sammy Kahn wrote successful and award-winning co compositions over a five-plus decade career. He received 31, 31 Oscar nominations for Best Original Song, 
more than any other lyricist in the industry, winning four Oscars. I know. The first came in 1955 with that beautiful Three Coins in the Fountain that he wrote with Julie Stein. It was introduced in, a, in the film of the same name by Frank Sinatra in 1957. With music by Jimmy Van Heusen, he wrote the song All the Way. This was introduced by Frank Sinatra in the film The Joker is Wild. In 1960, High Hopes took the Oscar. This again was music with Jimmy Van Heusen, introduced by Frank Sinatra <laughs> and Eddie Hodges for the film A Hole in the Head. And in 1964, Call Me Irresponsible, that he wrote with, again, Jimmy Van Heusen. This one, however, was introduced by Jackie Gleason in the film Papa's Delicate Condition. He earned five Golden Globe nominations. He earned uh, a Grammy nomination, but no winners there. He did win one Emmy for the song Love and Marriage that he wrote with Jimmy Van Heusen for the 1955 televised musical adaptation of Thornton Wilder's drama, Our Town. In 1992, he was awarded the first recipient, he was the first, sorry, he was the first recipient of the Golden Word Award. This was created by ASCAP for Outstanding Achievement in Lyric Writing. And here's a great example of his lyric artistry. It's showcased in perhaps the fewest number of words that he wrote for, that he wrote for a song. He wrote this with composer Julie Stein for the 1944 Hollywood film, Anchors Away. It brought them an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Song, I Fall In Love Too Easily.
Although several of the songs that Sammy Kahn brought to five Broadway musicals, they were successful, the musicals, not so much. Um, the one that actually could claim any success was High Button Shoes. The others didn't get even up to 200 openings, so you know, not, not so good. Anyway, he collaborated with Julie Stein for the music for the uh, Broadway musical Glad to See Ya in 1944. 1947, again with Julie Stein, they wrote the music for High Button Shoes. He collaborated with Jimmy Van Heusen in 1965 for the Broadway musical Skyscraper. Again with Van Heusen in 1966, and you keep trying, Walking Happy. And again, he teamed up with Julie Stein for the 1970 Look to the Lilies. <laughs> well, so I just have a little tiny personal note here I have to just say. So I hail from upstate New York. And every year, um, actually right before and during my early teens, my dad would take my sister and me to the big city in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We would stay um, at a hotel near or on Central Park. We would get our hair done and buy new clothes at Best and Company. Does anybody remember Best and Company? <laughs> that was a great store. That was a great, great, great store. We were in awe over the windows on Fifth Avenue that were all decked out for Christmas. And we would always see one or two Broadway musical. So I have a lot of great memories, and I'm going to tell you two. The first one doesn't have anything to do with Sammy Kahn, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, a great memory I have is seeing Ray Charles at the Rainbow Room. Now, this was either a really early show, or it was a matinee, because I remember we sat in the front row, and I'm pretty sure I had a Shirley Temple in my hand. My other great memory is sitting next to my dad watching the Broadway musical Skyscraper. So before we take a break and we give you a break, please put your hands together one more time for this wonderful group of musicians. Randy Reinhardt, Tom Cecil, Robert Redd. We're going to close out the first half of the show with a 1953 classic torch song that Sammy Kahn wrote with composer Gene DePaul. Oh, before we do this, if you are going to pay, partake in the oysters, which are free, thank you, anonymous donor, please say thank you by tipping the oystermen. And it's a beautiful night out there. There's a full moon, but you're going to need your jacket. Okay, teach me tonight. is a black 